Hey friends out there, Rob here. Today I want to talk to you about radio frequency interference, specifically when using wireless microphone systems on location, on set, things like that. Now, this is meant to be an overview to kind of share with you some things to look for, especially if you're a new user or new into the audio world and you're trying to do some things like I might be. I did not know anything about this stuff when I got started years ago, and today it's something that I take as second nature. So I'm talking to a crowd, hopefully, that is interested in learning about these things and at least learning where some pitfalls could happen and maybe some best practices. By no means am I saying that I'm the all-encompassing knower of these kinds of things. In fact, I would suggest that you go and you learn a little bit more about this from many other channels, take a course or something like that, or just watch, read, and research. But this should help you get started with recognizing RF interference, how to isolate where it's coming from, and what to do about it when you see it. Okay, so let's jump on over. Today we are working with the Tascam Porta Capture X8. Now this is a new recorder in my, my whole lineup. I really like it quite a bit. And yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I have replaced the microphone capsules that normally go right here with my just eighth inch input jacks. Let's talk to you a little bit about what we've got going on. I have two eighth inch jack wireless transmitter receiver systems working right now. This one is the Kamika Boom XU, which is the UHF 500 megahertz system. I also have a Kamika Boom XD, X for digital. And this XD right here is working on the 2.4 gigahertz system. I have another microphone right here for the XU system. And then I have a, a Sennheiser XSWD right here, the lav kit that happens to have a, a Sennheiser microphone plugged in. These channels are all muted. The channel that you're hearing me speak on is actually the Boom XD. So radio frequency interference, what is it? Well, it sounds something like this. You like that? You hear that? Yeah, it's not any fun, is it? Let's move that away. So on this particular recorder, you'll see that I've got several inputs set, one, two, three, four, and are on, and two inputs that are off. And this is kind of how I went about troubleshooting where we got the radio frequency interference in the first place. Input one is the XD, input two is the XU, and then input three is the Sennheiser, okay? So the first thing that I needed to do was determine where the problem was coming. So I plugged everything in, and then just brought my a transmitter, this one in particular, around. And I've put it around the different ports. And now you can hear as we move from different areas that it's really the loudest right here. And you can hear a little bit of it in some of these other areas. I did not hear a lot of static or radio frequency interference on input five and input six. Later, I was able to determine that it's not necessarily a specific input that's causing the radio frequency interference. It's actually this transmitter. In fact, both transmitters on the 2.4 gigahertz system by Kamika have this issue. The Boom XU does not. And neither does the Sennheiser XSWD. I learned two things. The most sensitive area on this device for radio frequency interference happens to be this area right here on the left side by the headphone out and by input number four. I also found out that of course, out of all of my units, the Boom XD seems to be the least shielded. All right, so now that we've got it figured out where the radio frequency interference is coming from, we recognize that it's the Kamika Boom XD. We also realize that the interference is coming uh, into a particular area. Now it does affect multiple channels, it will affect others, but it affects channel four the most, which is why channel four was turned on in this test. So what are some things that we can do about it? Well, there are a couple things. Number one is move your wireless transmitters and receivers further away. Now you're going to have a wireless receiver plugged into the Tascam or whatever input device you're using to record audio. That's how the signal is going to get in to the, the system. But if you identify that there's a particular place on that spot, on that system that has this kind of an issue, just use one of those little bungee cords, like we've got little wireless cords, little spring cords, and move your transmitter receiver further away. That's the number one thing. And once you get about three to five inches away, the problem decreases quite a bit. By the time you're about a foot away, there's no more RF interference from it. 
Anyway, I wanted to share with this, with this with you and let you know there is one other thing that you can do. You can actually do noise reduction in Adobe Audition. Now, if you're going to do noise reduction and you're working with Adobe products and you're in Premiere, you quite likely have the Creative Cloud Suite. I would suggest using Audition to set your noise points and remove all of the audio interference that way. And that's something we're going to look at now. So we'll bring that into Audition right now. All right, so we've opened Adobe Audition. We've got a couple of different files loaded right here from a test that I was doing. And let's go ahead and load all three of these. We're going to take... Now, there's a couple things we want to look at when we're working with these, but the first one is just to listen. I'm going to solo track one. Hello, and welcome to a wireless microphone test. Today, we will be testing out two different systems of wireless microphones, one on the 500 megahertz, now we're going to come over here and solo track two. Hello and welcome to a wireless microphone test. Today we will be testing out two different systems of... Do you hear that? Okay, there's your RF interference right there. It has made it right up here. Okay, so we found a track that has this kind of an issue and we've learned the things that we can do to kind of mitigate this in the future, but we've got a problem now and the question is how do we get rid of it? Well, there are actually two separate ways. One is to do a noise print, specifically an Adobe Audition, so that we can capture that print and apply it to the entire uh, track in order to bring down that level of noise, but also we may even need to do some more correction, which is a hum remover, and this could be kind of, kind of a big deal. So let's check that out now. All right, so as we're looking, we see this, we've got this whole area. What we want to do is find a spot that seems to have only the noise. Now, in this particular case, I've gone ahead and done that for us, and we can find that spot right here. In this instance, I'm actually going to take this whole spot and create a selection. Now that I've got that selected, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come up here to our effects rack, and we're going to go to noise and restoration, and we're actually going to go to the dehummer. Okay. Now, in this instance, the dehummer will start in a default. And the dehummer will ask us how many different points do we want to try to sample from. Now, you'll notice down at the bottom, I've actually got this spectral array, which shows us where these different uh, lines have come, well, well, where these different frequencies are coming from. And these bands that go straight across horizontally are showing us where we're having quite a bit of issue. And if you look at this spectral print, you'll notice <laughs> it's got a lot of issue. And in this particular print, we can actually see them. It's the 200, the 600, the 800, with 1000 is where the majority of the noise is coming in. There's a lot of little faint background noise in the back, but it's actually all throughout the spectrum. But we get it again a lot fainter in the 4000, 4500, 5200 to 6000. So we get it across the entire band, but we also get it mainly in the 1000 and below, as well as in the 4000 and 5500. So we get it in those two different areas. The next thing that we're gonna do is now that we've got this selection, we're gonna wanna loop it. So we click our little loop button right here, and then we click play. We click, click play so that we can hear it. We've also selected the number of harmonics to be eight because we've got at least four or five large channels plus several more and this gives us additional points over here. Now as we're working through this it's going to sound terrible but we can fix it. The first thing is to just play and then begin adjusting your cue as well as the range. Now, I also want to drop my decibel all the way down. Now I notice although it's dropped down I still hear it that's because the majority of it's happening in this particular area. You can also grab this and, and move it around, but I'm going to move it now. And a lot of the noise A lot of the noise is good. Okay, now before we get rid of this, we want to actually apply that to the rest. So we come out here and we control A, and now the entire selection has been selected, and we click apply. And notice 
immediately we have quite a bit less noise in this section right here. All right. And if you hear the airplane going over, I'm sorry. Mm, that's even better. Now all of that noise has been removed. Now in this instance, some of our treble got removed. It's very bassy, and that's because that's where we heard a lot of that sound. So we can go back in and continue to adjust that using our essential sound panel over here on the left. I'm going to leave that up to your ears for later, but we've demonstrated how to remove that artificial, that nasty RF hum, and I hope that you found it helpful. I definitely think it was a, a good thing. So, guys, I'm Rob. I hope you like this video. If you do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down at the bottom, and I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye for now.